What can you do to elevate a simple box of stuffing mix that you find in the back of your pantry? Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Hi folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com. Welcome to my channel. Today is another edition of the back of the pantry challenge where we challenge you to grab something from the back of your pantry that you don't know how to use other than its intended purpose and find a new way to do it to make your pantry more versatile. So today, Linda from Linda's Pantry, Lisa from Sutton's Days, Linda from Tulalu Creates, uh, Prepper Potpourri, and uh, Jenny from Jenny Goff and I are all doing some version of a meal or a dish that requires a box of stuffing mix that you typically use only at Thanksgiving. So we're gonna all find new and different ways to use this. Today, I'm teaching you how to make sausage stuffing balls that are tremendous. They make a great hors d'oeuvre. They make a great side dish. If you want something a little different than a typical stuffing dish that you would serve at a holiday meal, whatever holiday meal that might be. And then I have a special treat. Yes, I make things other than dehydrated powders and waffles, but this just fits perfectly to the the idea of using the stuffing mix in a whole new way, and I hope that you're going to enjoy it, so stay tuned. Oh, and if you want to see the list of everybody's pantry challenge, I'm going to leave all the links down below so that you can watch them all. All right, here are the ingredients you're going to need. This looks like a lot. It doesn't have to be this much, okay? You can do whatever you'd like. This is a pretty easy versatile and forgiving recipe. So if you don't have all the stuff, don't use all the stuff. We have two boxes of chicken uh, flavored stuffing mix. You can use whatever of this that you want. I mean, granted, you can even make this from homemade if you'd like. And I'll show you how to do the breadcrumbs here in the iCards and down in the description box below. I'll leave a link to it. So we've got stuffing mix because that's the star of our show today. Then I have, let's go with a pound of sausage, uh, whatever kind of sausage that you like to use. My husband would prefer if I used hot. I can't do the hot, so I just use mild uh, and just leave it at that. If I wanted to make a batch of this for him, I could easily split the batch and, and then add a little hot sauce to his. He likes to do that to kind of spice it up if I don't have uh, spicy enough stuff for him. We're going to need two eggs, green powder. If you don't know what green powder is, check the links. I'll have links for everything in the description box below. If you're on your phone, you're going to have to hit the little arrow to expand that out. I have caramelized mirepoix. Uh, you could use a regular uh, one onion instead. I'm just going to use the powder because this is a texture that a bunch of my family doesn't like in their things. They like the flavor of onion, but not the texture. Then I'm going to add a little tomato powder for a twist. I'm going to need two cups of chicken broth. I, I'm using some, oh, celery powder because we don't eat celery in food. Uh, sage, thyme, two cloves of garlic, but I'm going to use, I mean, three cloves of garlic, but I'm probably going to use four. Uh, some, uh, some shredded cheese. You don't want a ton of it, but you want it just for a little extra depth of flavor. Uh, and then a few carrots. You can, and carrots, you can do as much as you want. Uh, and I've got my mise knife and a vegetable peeler uh, that I've already peeled the carrots with, so that's why it's dirty, um, and a skillet, and then you're gonna need a waffle maker later, because, yeah, you're gonna need a waffle maker. It's a secret. And I mustn't forget mushroom powder. Okay, while I get my sausage browning, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the vegetables started. Let me get this cut up some. Okay, um, a trick my grandmother taught me when I was growing up, instead of shredding carrots with a grater uh, that can be hard for some people, or if um, you're always afraid of cutting your hands, this is what we always did. We would just shred it with our, potato, our vegetable peeler. <clears throat> this is not a means of making any faster. Uh, this was just a trick that we always did at her house when I was helping her with dinner, and then I started doing it here too. Now you might find this particular um, method, you know, tedious and that's fine. You can finely dice your carrots, you can shred your carrots, you can do whatever. I like to have a fine, I do a fine shred and then just come through here and cut it up. What this allows is for the carrots to have less texture in a, in a dish. But I have, um, one of my kids is really highly texture sensitive. He's been that way since he was a baby. Um, so, and my husband doesn't often like vegetables in things. He likes vegetables on their own. So I just accommodate 
by you know making them as finely chopped and ground as I possibly can. That's why powders are such an amazing uh, part of my my repertoire in my kitchen uh, because you can add all the vegetables in the world and you know there's some taste but the nutrition's there they just don't have the texture they don't have to bite into something so that's a fine enough chop for me still is going to give some color you can see them but they'll cook up pretty easily I'm gonna push this aside Remember, there's a way to uh, to help your knives last a little longer when you're using it to move your food around on your chopping blocks. Don't use the blade in and scrape across because that dulls your blade. Just flip it over and use the backside. And in our family, we typically like a little food with our garlic. So if a recipe calls for two cloves, you betcha we're going to have, you know, six. You can also use whatever kind of sausage you want, um, any kind of Italian sausage, you can use turkey sausage, you can use, you know, I'm just using regular breakfast sausage, but you can just use ground beef too. I just think that sausage has a little more flavor to it, but that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, beef up your beef and add a ton of, of spices to it to create more flavor just within the beef. You could use whatever you like. And yes, if you have canned beef or canned sausage, use it. You can use it in this recipe. Um, just brown it up really well. When you empty it, brown it up really, really well. Um, and then just use it like you would use this. Having it really finely ground is works best. I'm going to add about half a tablespoon of tomato powder. I don't want a ton. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the Mayoprof powder. Oh wait, that's celery powder I don't want. I want a little extra celery. I'm doing about half, uh, probably a third of a tablespoon of that. Just putting some sage in. A little or a lot, whatever you'd like. Oh no, you know that wasn't sage; that was poultry seasoning. That'll work too. I don't. That's one jar I don't have marked. Mark the jars, folks. But my poultry seasoning has a lot of thyme in it. I mean, a lot of sage in it. Okay, there's thyme. Then a table. So I'm going to go ahead and add a full tablespoon of the mirepoix powder. About a tablespoon of green powder. And a heaping tablespoon of mushroom powder. Now when you add all these powders to your to your recipes, you're probably gonna have to add a little extra moisture. When you are doing a meatloaf or any kind of thing like that, I'm gonna move you just a little bit closer right here. So that, um, that it has a chance to absorb and not use up any of the extra moisture that comes with the meat. Um, most recipes I don't, but for something like this I'm going to add a little extra because then you're also adding in the bread that needs to have some moisture added to it as well and I'm making a mess. <clears throat> Those of you who have been around know that I, I tend to do that, I tend to make messes. I am not a fussy cook. I make mess. Okay, so our mixture. You're going to want to let it have a little time to cook down the carrots and the onions if you're using onions and, and the garlic. You want them soft. You don't want them uh, hard. They're not going to really have time to cook any other time. So I'm going to leave this here on. I'm just going to turn the heat off and let them just do their thing in the pan while I get other things ready. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, I am so sorry, but I just lost the footage to uh, how I put the mix together. Okay, so what I have in the bowl right here are two eggs, um, 
two cups of chicken broth and my cheese and I put it all together and I allowed it to sit there for a little while to let the bread hydrate along with the stuffing mix okay I put all that together in here I allowed that to, to hydrate for a little while then I added my meat mixture into it and then just did this okay so I made this this spread this is not pretty but it's really good so what I do at this point is I make balls like this out of it now these um, will stick together and if you need to add more liquid to it that's why I go ahead and use a box instead of any of my can can broth um, I just prefer it that way because I don't have to open a second can I leave those in there and I just have to worry about this so what I do is I pull out a little bit of the mixture and instead of rolling it like you would think that you would need to roll it um, I just make a ball in my fingers like this I don't like I don't sit here and try to roll it hard because this will come apart so while you can make these like a golf ball size my husband actually prefers them a little smaller because he likes the better crispy aspect of this more than he likes the inner soft. So I just make them sort of in between whatever. I just get a little mix and then just squish up my hands. If you find that this doesn't squish and it's still a little uh, dry, then just add some more moisture. Give it some time to uh, hydrate. Don't just put some moisture in, um, mix it up really well and then start. You need to give everything some time to, to incorporate that moisture. So I'm going to roll a bunch of these up, and I've got them going into a 375 degree oven. And you're going to give them about 15 to 25 minutes, depending on how crispy you like yours. And if you have an air fryer, these would probably work really well in the air fryer. I don't have one, um, or I would do it for you. That's how I would be doing these if I had one. Um, but if you have an air fryer, give this a try. So, this was a trick that I learned from Alton a few years ago when he did this, and I thought, oh, that is so genius. That kind of takes care of everything. But then you can make this, and you can actually have this for breakfast if you like. Um, it, it's a savory waffle as opposed to a sweet waffle. Um, you can put smashed uh, sweet potatoes on top to make it kind of a dressing if you want to add some extra um, some extra to it. You can put cranberry sauce on top to make it a little sweet. You don't have to put anything on it at all because these have a really great flavor. Um, I know that sometimes we have actually done a little cream cheese or uh, some sour cream. Uh, so it's like you can just put whatever you want on it if you even want to put anything at all. It makes a great handheld breakfast to walk away with. Meal. But we've got eggs, we've got sausage, we've got toast, we've got some cheese, we've got lots and lots of vegetables on the inside. So it's a perfect meal. All right, so it's heated. And typically, I will add a little oil to mine, even if it's nonstick, because I want to make sure that this stuff doesn't stick. And I tend to use a little bit of extra oil. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside the waffle maker, and I'm going to make sure I get it everywhere. These are not going to be pretty waffles, folks. And it's getting a little dry, so I think. So I did go ahead and just add a little extra moisture in here. There's the oven. I'm about to put the meatballs in, I'm put the stuffing balls in. All right, I'm going to add a little more of this. And what you don't want to do is make huge, big, thick waffles. If I, my waffle maker does happen to be a Belgian waffle. Uh, it's a thicker waffle. But if you have a traditional size waffle, it actually works better because it's thinner and it... Uh, and it just makes a better waffle. All right, so I'm gonna do this. So these aren't going to be pretty waffles, okay? But they're gonna taste really, really, really good. All right, get it all pressed down and I'll let that go. Now this is gonna take a while to cook. It's not quite as quick as a regular waffle, but I'm gonna put the uh, stuffing balls into the oven and I will show you the results in just a minute. All righty then, here is our waffle. Get a plate. You could actually make this as as, uh, as crispy as you'd like if you'd like to like super crispy outsides. But this is the perfect way for me. Is that it's still a little a little gooey? Oh no, I'm not done, am I? It sure looks like it's done the middle, but not on the edge. All right, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. So here you go. This is stuffing waffles, stuffing and sausage waffles, and stuffing sausage balls. 
they may not look pretty, but they taste oh so good. So I hope that you'll give this a try as a different way to use something out of the back of your pantry. If you want to see the last back of the pantry video I did, it's right here. It's going to be right here uh, for pumpkin. And if you want to see the rest of the whole back of the pantry series that uh, the other ladies did this month with their stuffing, I'm going to leave a link to that playlist down below in the description box so that you can go watch each of those videos. And until next time, happy dehydrating.